I will begin with the first part of the presentation and then hand over to Hermann Kumar, who will present um, some information about Carl Zeiss India. That's the agenda for today. So we'll start a very short overview of battery tasks um, and one slight introduction of the X-ray technology, um, just as a basic background. And then we'll go over to the X-ray technology for material development, then for the quality assurance for battery cells and in the quality assurance for battery modules. And after that, in chapter six, we'll show you what's possible um, at Carl Zeiss India. So let's start with an overview of battery tasks. We can divide the process of manufacturing a battery into a lot of different steps and um, we can somehow group them or divide them into what we can see here, the battery material, things, so everything about research and development, for the anode, cathode and separator material. And then we'll start with the battery production. In battery production, there's also a lot of different steps like the processing of the raw materials, then the electrode is produced, the cell is assembled, then all the cells are assembled to battery module and then to a battery pack. And many critical things, uh, many possible issues um, do not depend on the exact um, format of the cell or the materials inside. So a lot of things we'll see here today can be used for cylindrical cells, flat jelly roll cells, or also stacked cells. So now the very short introduction to the X-ray technology. Um, most people know CT from the medical sector and in general for industrial CT systems, it's quite similar. So at least the main components. So also here in the industrial CT, we'll need one X-ray source, one detector and some kind of positioning system. In most cases, at least one rotation table so the part is rotated in the cone beam of the X-ray and a lot of single 2D X-ray projections is then taken. So you get 2D information on the 360 degrees rotation. And based on these 2D images, the 3D volume is then calculated. And then of course, depending on the specific system, depending on the, on the part geometry and so on, we'll have different possibilities um, and a big difference is also what kind of magnification we achieve. So here you can see an example. So if the part is um, moving closer to the detector, we'll have a more coarse, a more a bigger voxel size. So voxel size is the volumetric pixel um, that tells us how much details we can see. And here's an example. If you scan the sphere like that, with a high magnification, you'll get small of these so-called voxels. We get fine details, a very good surface of the part. If you have a lower magnification, you have a bigger voxel size. So now let's go directly to the extreme in material development. For, for all of the three steps, material development, um, cell assembly and module assembly, you will have totally different kind of applications of things we want to know, we want to evaluate in our cells. And um, so, if we have, if we look at the cells, we're somehow in the centimeter range. So we have some other stuff to look at if you want to know the millimeter range. So as can be seen here, uh, for example, in light microscope. But if you go down to the materials, you're more in the micrometer or even the nanometer range. And nanometer range is typical for scanning electron microscopes. We also do offer these kind of solutions at size, but the disadvantage of the SEM is that you have to somehow prepare your sample. You have to cut it, you have to polish it. This takes a lot of time um, and you'll get only some part of the information needed. If you want to have a look into your battery cell without destroying it, so you can use it for different other tests, aging tests and so on, um, you can still stay on the micrometer range and use, for example, X-ray microscopy. So the first X-ray technology I want to show you is X-ray microscopy. And um, to show you what is based on the principle behind it, I have a very short video here. And um, yeah, let's have just a look at it.
So let's stop at this um, um, here. Um, so the most important thing I wanted to show you is with the X-ray microscopy, you have this so-called resolution at distance. That means it's somehow working like a standard or traditional CT, but then you have the additional optical magnification. So this is why it's an X-ray microscope then. And with that, as mentioned, we can have a really detailed look into our samples without destroying them, without opening in them. And um, here we'll see an example for a small pouch cell. You can scan all kinds of battery cells with that kind of systems. So at size, we call our X-ray microscopes X-ray diaversa. And what we can achieve here is can be seen on this slide. So this is the volume scanned of this example. And then you can zoom in and you'll see that you even can recognize the single particles um, of your electrode material. So you can even see if there are defects inside the single particles. And please keep in mind, the good thing is you can scan your prototype, for example, and your first part um, directly after manufacturing. Then you can do a lot of different tests. You can do your electric tests. You can do your aging cycles and so on. And then scan exactly the same um, place at the sample. So you can really have a look at this region and see how it changed during your other tests. And with X-ray microscopy, you can get uh, voxel sizes of down to 70 nanometers, so far below one micron. Here's another example of the same part. So you see it in this image, you have a really good contrast. So you see the separator layer that's made of polymer and the bubbles here in the electrolyte and so on. And as mentioned before, all the single um, particles. And with that, it's possible to have a look at, for example, the silicon particles in your cell. So here you can see the fresh cell in the image. And one cell in the same region after one uh, two, 200 cycling um, cycles of aging. And what you can see here, there's in this example, there's no longer any silicon particles. If you go back to another sample and do uh, you want to know what happened and then make a CT on um, X radio scan after 100 cycles, you see what happens with the silicon particle here. And as mentioned before, you can also do something like that using X ray, um, sorry, scanning electron microscope. But then you cannot have a look at the same region of the sample. So here's again a short video because here we can see now um, what happened after the 100 aging cycles with the silicon. And so it becomes visible that there's swelling and cracking and growth of an insulating layer. So you get a real um, good understanding of your base materials that you use for producing your battery cells or your electrolytes and then out of these, the battery cells. But you cannot only have a look, a really detailed look at your materials, but also you can use it, the X-ray microscope for optimizing your process parameter. This can be seen in this example. So here we can see two samples that were produced with two different calendaring pressures. And um, the density of the particles in the electrodes is really of great importance. And so using the microscope here, you can have a look again at the single particles. You can see if there's not a, if it's not very efficient, efficiently packed, or if it's too close packed, if there are cracks in the particles and so on. So you can use it for both material research and also optimizing of the process, process at the very base level. What is really important both for the performance of your cell after production, um, but also for the safety reasons. Okay, now we've seen a little bit about, about the X-ray microscopy. Now we go into the next step to the um, battery cells. Here we talk about the traditional computer tomography systems. And one of the biggest advantage of the CT it's high flexibility. So it can be used on a lot of different stages of the process, um, what is showed here on this slide. So you can use the CT also for the research and development process. Even if you cannot reach the maybe um, um, below one micron resolution voxel size, you still can go, go down to maybe three, four, five, something like that. And also this can help you. Um, and you can use the same system to have a look at the production 
of course, the standard CT is not for the 100% inline inspection, but you can use it for the closed blood production, also called atline um, production evaluation. You can also use it in the quality analysis lab and check the, the um, production process, product quality, and your quality gates of the production. But you can also use the same system for the failure analysis. This means if you get the part back from the field that somehow um, was damaged, broken, something like that, you can then analyze it and look for the, um, for the defect inside or, or the reason that caused the defect without opening it. So, because if you have to open the sample, then you cannot tell every time, maybe if you just brought in new defects um, of you, or if you maybe just miss the defect. So this is what makes uh, CT so advantageous um, for the battery manufacturing. Then let's have a look what we can do using the CT. So of course, there's a lot of different possible issues in the production process, but um, somehow the, the most important are almost the same. Of course, every manufacturer has its own tolerances, um, his own focus on different topics, but there are a lot of things that come um, are requested every time. And here we can see some of these examples on a prismatic cell now. So one thing that we can do is measure the overhang. Now we'll see one slide about that in a little, with a little bit more details later. We can have a look for the defects inside the housing. Um, so also the, for example, the safety things like the burst membrane and so on. We can check the welding quality. We can also use the CT to optimize the space design. Um, so of the housing of the electrodes inside and we can look for defects of the electrodes. And if it's a stacked pouch cell, for example, we can also check the uh, misalignment of the single electrodes layers. Speaking about the overhang measurement, so using CT is the only, yeah, the only possibility to have a look inside your cell without opening it after its um, the production is finished. And what we can do is we can measure the distance from anode to anode, cathode to cathode, or anode to cathode. And here it's important to know the minimum and the maximum distances. That's also really safety, um, safety issue, safety critical issue. And then of course, depending on, on what kind and on what station of the process and what step of the process you're inspecting your cell, um, you can scan with different parameters and maybe also in um, another system. Because it's different, of course, if you scan with a really high resolution, can be seen here on these two images for a pouch cell and for a prismatic cell. So you'll get really um, the information about the single layers here and can really easily measure from, from one layer to the other. Or if you're measuring close to the production, get a really fast scan and maybe need something like um, yeah, some advanced measurement uh, solutions to, to find here these distances. So the good thing is that you can use for, for both things, you can also use the same system. So it's not um, necessarily needed to have um, one CT for the high resolution analysis and one for the fast analysis, but our systems or most of our systems are that kind of flexible that you can use it for both and use it very fast or really precise with high resolution. Let's have a look at the welding. So here we see the taps is an example, um, and here on the 2D images. So this is a 2D slice image, image of the 3D volume data. And then you can really check the, the welding process. You can see if there are any cracks in the welding, if there are any pores, if there are any material missing. Um, if not all foils are welded together as needed and so on. So you can see the air, you can see the metal, you can see if there's enough contact area and things like that. And talking about electrode defects, of course, there's a lot of different types of defects inside the electrodes. Here we can see some of the typical defects. So you can check if there are any um, problem in your winding of the electrodes. You can see if there are uh, different gaps and different regions of the, um, of the electrode of the jelly roll. You can see 
they're blended electrodes or if they're really cracks or impact um, damages. And of course, you can also check if there are foreign material particles inside. For example, this can be a problem after the welding process that some uh, metal sticks to the electrodes. And then it can happen that there's a short circuit. So again, very safety critical um, evaluation. You can also see if there's a problem in the single layers here. So this again is a high resolution scan, but in general, you can also check for that depending on the size that is critical for your sample. You can also check that in a really fast way using the fast CT scan. And what you can also do what, what I mentioned earlier, you can check the, the misalignment with single layers for, in a stacked cell. So here you can see the 3D data of the single layers, different electrodes. Um, then if you just virtually, so please remind only virtual cut the sample into regions. So we can see here the blue cut, in this case, the X direction. And the red cut here is the, oh, sorry, this is the red, uh, sorry. The red cut is the Y direction, the blue cut is the X direction. And so based on this information, you can then calculate the misalignment, so the angle between the different layers. So these were some of the most important checks performed on battery cells. I have a short video for an example, how this looks like so on the CT, so that we get an impression of a CT. And here we'll see our size metal home 1500, this is one of our, this is our biggest metrotome system, our biggest CT um, in this um, family of systems. And in this example, it's a cylindric battery scan, but of course the system can also be used to generate images as, um, as were seen on the last few slides. So this is one 21700 cylindrical cell. Some very easy and flexible kind of fixture in this case. So you don't need always a very special fixture for each kind of battery. Could also scan 18650, for example, in the same the styrofoam or some other foam. Or you can, of course, for a serial production check, um, have a really a fixture design for this one kind of cell. Yes, then we'll see the X-rays turned on. We have the we see here the single 2D X-ray projections. So the part is rotated in the cone beam. And then afterwards, you can take out the sample. The volume is calculated by the software. And then you can use some other software. Uh, for example, our chrome volume inspect can be seen here in this video, in this part of the video, um, to make visualization. So you can have a look at the surfaces. You can change the colors, the transparency, and so on. But of course, you can also have a look at the 2D slice views on each part of the sample. So you can check, you get information, of the complete cell. And also for the CT, it's, it's the same true as for the X-ray microscope. You could now do your several tests, um, aging cycles and so on. Scan the same battery again and have a look at the same regions. Here in the metatome scan, we see also different electrode layers. We see the current collector. And we can of of course, also use COM volume inspect for some easy 2D measurement for the distances of the electrodes. Just an exemplary measurement here. Yes. So after the inspection of the cell, let's go to the next step, our quality assurance for battery modules. And here we can say that the main problems are somehow the same, and we have some additional more um, on top of that. But also in the module, we can, in this kind, we have several cells inside our module. And even in the sample state, we can now have a look for the cell defects. We can also measure to some extent the overhang of anodes and cathodes. We can check the housing, now the housing of the module, but also the housing of the cell, if necessary. We can check weldings. We can also find metal contamination in the complete module. And additional to the single cell, we have also a lot of different electronic comp components um, we want to analyze now. If you have a look at overhang inspection, then of course, 
in general, general, we can say that scanning a complete module that is much bigger than a single cell, we always have to um, think about scanning time and resolution. So in general, the scanning time will be higher as for a single cell, and also the resolution will be lower. But nevertheless, it's possible to do this overhang measurement. And uh, for example, if you have to come back to the failure an analysis method, um, if you get back a module from the field that is broken or damaged, then it's absolute, absolutely good to have a first view into the complete assembled module before you open the module and check where's the defect in what, in which of the cells. So even if you may not recognize each of each small defect inside the complete module, it can help you there. So as mentioned, you can now check the, um, the overhang you can also check the, the welding. And this time you can check the welding both on the cells, but also for example, the welding to the bus bar. And then as mentioned before, we have a lot of different electronic components. So for example, different kinds of connectors um, with different kinds of metal pins. So you want to check maybe if they're all pins at the correct position, if there's some bending, if there's some contact where there shouldn't be one. Um, we can also have a look at the PCBs. We can check if the soldering is done correctly and things like that. As with that, I have another video now for you. So this time about one other system or so-called Volumax 9 Titan. This is a system that was especially designed for inspecting battery modules. Just have a quick look now. So here you can see the, the battery module inside the, the system. You can step in into the cabinet. So this is a 450 kV system really designed to, to penetrate big and heavy parts like battery modules. That's just a short impression of that system. So now we saw in this presentation, this webinar, we saw three different videos. And in all of that, there was a different system um, used for the scanning. And what is important to know that there's not one system that can solve all of your tasks. So we have flexible systems like our metrotomes. Um, but there are also some systems for more specific kind of evaluation. And at size, we have four different X-ray system families. You can see here, two of them below this line are the more production line flows, uh, the systems close to the production line. We have the Porcello systems. These are mainly 2D um, X-ray systems. So you get really fast 2D inspection, get a lot of information, but only the two dimensions. You cannot measure, for example, the volume of the defects. Then we have the Volumark systems. These are um, like traditional CTs, but all of the components they are built up, um, up um, are chosen to be very robust and stable. So these systems can be run all day and night, so 24 seven um, and inspector parts in a high automation level up to 100% inspection. And then on the top of this line, we'll see our two laboratory systems families the X-Radia I mentioned before, so our X-ray microscopes. Also here we have different systems in, within this family. And we have our, our high precision metrology systems, the Metrotom family. And there we also have the different systems and the most flex flexibility also saw in the video, for example, was the Metrotom 1500. So I hope you have now an overview about what is possible using CT for the battery cell, for the materials, for the cell and the module and what we can solve using that technology. And with that, I want to hand over to my colleague Hermann, Hermann that will show you what they can do at SAIS in India. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Tobias. Uh, I hope I'm audible to all. First of all, a warm welcome from my side uh, to all the participants. My name is Hemant Kumar. I, uh, I take care of sales uh for for zeiss indian operation so i'll just share my screen yeah basically i'm i'm here to uh, here to talk about uh carl zeiss india operation now tobias have shown you uh, uh, a lot of x-ray system what is available and what kind of uh, 
CT applications we have done for the uh, battery world or the uh, for the for the cells and the modules. So uh, having seen all the facilities, uh, what can Zeiss India offer uh, to the uh, to the cell and the battery uh, manufacturer? So here uh, we would like to emphasize the fact that Zeiss has uh, Zeiss India has invested tremendously on uh, on the on different uh, quality excellence centers all over India to take care of uh, measurement and the analysis uh, of batteries. So uh, this is the view of uh, Carl Zeiss uh, India headquarters in Bangalore, and uh, we belong to uh, IQ US division. Just to give a short overview, uh, we started Indian operations way back in 1975 with our business partner, uh, Empire Machine Tools at that time. And uh, from then uh, in 1998, we started our own uh, operations with our sales and the uh, service setup uh, started in Bangalore. And after that, uh, we have uh, opened up a lot of regional offices all over India. And we also started our production uh, facility to assemble our uh, CMMs uh, in Bangalore. So it's not only sales service organization. Yeah. So we move ahead. So I, I was explaining about the uh, Carl Zeiss Indian operation. Uh, uh, we started in 1975 with our business partner and further to that, uh, we opened our own uh, sales and service organization in 1998. From there, I think there was no looking back. We have opened up uh, different regional offices all over India, and we also established a lot of uh, uh, quality uh, excellence center, which is our uh, demo centers for our customers. So uh, in, in, in India, uh, we have uh, uh, established uh, quality engineering centers uh, in, in uh, Bangalore, in Chennai, uh, in Pune. These are our major uh, tech centers. And also we have some satellite tech centers like one in uh, Coimbatore. And uh, we also have a small tech center in, in Delhi. Going forward, there will be a full-fledged uh, tech center in Delhi as well, uh, which again will uh, will be equipped with uh, with a lot of uh, latest equipment for the again for the battery community. So these are a glimpse of our tech centers. What we have, uh, the first one you can see is the Bangalore facility, and the next was in, one is in Chennai. So this is our uh, uh, Bangalore tech center where you can see a lot of uh, CMMs, battle of CMMs, you can uh, see lineup of CMMs, different models what we have. And this is also a, a view of our production facility in Bangalore where we do assembly of our CMMs and we uh, we export uh, machines from here to all, all over the world. And also we, uh, we cater to the uh, domestic uh, market. So uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a year, we do about say about uh, 200 CMMs uh, we, uh, we produce and then uh, sell to our customers. If you look at the uh, capabilities of our uh, tech center, uh, we have the Bangalore, the, that's our headquarters where we have most of the machines uh, right from uh, CMMs, uh, optical CMMs, uh, microscopes, uh, uh, light microscope to some extent where Tobias was mentioning about uh, how, how you do the material anal analysis. So light microscope and scanning uh, electron microscope take care of uh, the material analysis. And we also have a X-ray uh, machine, this Metrotome 1500, which uh, the last slide which you have uh, seen from Tobias is available in, in Bangalore. Uh, also we have an X-ray machine available in Pune and Chennai. So all these three uh, 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 quality uh, QE centers, they are equipped with our uh, with, uh, with our CT machine and we can very well take up your um, uh, measuring challenges and we can measure all your battery related or cell related components in, in these tech centers. We also have a tie up uh, with our customer, one of our customer where he's using our uh, X-Radia machine where we talk of uh, resolution less than a 
uh, micron where we get into a nano level. So we also have tie up with customers. So in case if you are into R&D of uh, material analysis, and if you want to get into finer details right to the uh, size of uh, nanometer level, we'll be able to support you with with, uh, with our uh, facility available all over India. So that's the commitment we would like to assure you uh, from Carl's India side. So what kind of analysis uh, we can do right from nanometer to centimeter level, uh, we, can, uh, we can provide all necessary solutions for the uh, battery world. So it can be either uh, a porosity analysis or the particle size analysis complete uh, package and uh, assembly if you want to check that's that's possible or if you want to get into a single layer and you want to uh, take a deep dive into the material side we have both uh, scanning electron microscopes and x-rays for that so these are the uh, uh, capabilities what we have in our labs uh, like for the microstructure analysis chemical analysis porosity analysis these are the analysis which is possible from all our uh, tech center and uh, we have our uh, experts available in each field uh, here as uh, here in india as well as we are globally well connected our team in germany or uh, china is very well uh, you know uh, have a very good experience in handling uh, uh, this uh, new uh, way of measuring the batteries so we have a good expertise with us wherein you can come and make use of the uh, facilities what we have here. So with this, uh, I, I, uh, I end my short presentation on what are the capabilities what we have in uh, India and we now open up for the Q&A session. Thank you so much, Hemant, and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tobias, for your presentations. We have some question and answers coming in from uh, the audience members. And but before we go to audience questions, I have one question for uh, Dr. Tobias. I want to understand what is your global footprint for X-ray solutions, and uh, specifically for battery technology. And what are your plans for the EV market in general? You are muted, uh, Tobias. Okay. So um, yes, now so this is a more strategic um, question, right? So. Um, of course, you can use, so the, the good thing about for us, for, for our customers, uh, is that the CT, or the X-ray technology in general, um, is this kind of flexible. I hope that we could show this today. So the system can be used for, by both cell manufacturer, module assembly manufacturing sites, um, and car manufacturers. Um, so this means that it can be used all over the world, because we also have a lot of uh, sites all over the world, mm -hmm. but um, I think I'm the wrong person to tell you about the strategic plans um, for global strategy. Okay. Sorry. All right, no worries. We will move on to the questions that have been put in the box by our audience members today. So our first question is, can we see how SEI layer breaks down with temperature rise with this Zeiss technology? Yes, so um, the question here comes more often about what we can see for details, different kind of, so the one is the SCI, uh, one asking for something else. But so the main thing is, what is the, what details can we achieve? What details can we um, solve? But, so what magnifications can we achieve and so on? And this is something that is always depending on a specific um, part, so a specific sample, what's the size of the sample, What's the material, um, how much material do you have? So how much weight do we have of the sample and what kind of specific system you're using? So of course uh, it's a difference if you scan the cylindric cell on the metatome or an X-ray microscope like an X-ray Versa. But we can tell that we can have a look at details uh, starting from really about one micron if you use an X-ray microscope and um, for a metal tome, maybe something like starting for three, four, five microns. Mm -hmm. And of course, if we have a look at a complete module, then we will not res uh, resolve these kind of small details. Then maybe we can start something like, so this is just an estimation for a typical size. Again, it's really strongly depending on the sample, but something like starting up from 
20 microns for a single cell, maybe starting 40 or 50 microns for a complete assembled module. Okay, thanks. And there, is, there are a couple of questions regarding the capability to analyze cell welding quality. Yes, so the, the welding quality is, um, can be checked using CT and um, it can be both checked, or not only both, but it can be checked by the X-ray microscope for, for the opti optimization of the process. But it can also be used for the metatome um, for a close to production um, evaluation, or it can also be checked in the completely assembled module by using a Volumax system. Um, but of course, the, the detailness is completely different, the same as for the resolution in general. So to find the small defects, to find the small pores and so on inside the welding, you need extra microscope or a metrotome. And for a more, if you have a quite stable process and just want to check and be on the safe side, then maybe the volume of resolution is good enough for that kind of evaluation. Okay. And there's another question uh, on, uh, can we check the alignment of the cell before stacking and based on the feedback, the cell is stacked properly on one another? Is so, yeah, so we can check the, the cell stacking again using a metatome or Volumax. Um, and then of course you can use this if you see that you have every time the same misalignment, um, then you can use this information to optimize the process, right? Mm -hmm. If I get the question correctly. Okay. There's one question from Mr. Himanshu Maithani and he's asking, does this technology help to monitor the dendrites building in solid state batteries electrolyte? and way to mitigate it effectively. Yes, so we have a quite high contrast. So we saw all the, for example, also the polymer layers in the cell if we use the X-ray microscope. But what we cannot do in the same kind as for a scanning electron microscope is to see the structure of the metal. It is possible to some extent for some kind of samples, but if you scan a complete battery cell, like a pouch cell, for example, then I, then I think, so I'm not, a, I'm not working with the X-ray microscope every day. I'm more close to the Metatome and Volumark systems, but I think that we won't get this information using X-ray microscope here. Okay. And can Mr. Devesh is asking, can we use this to know about density, the cell density? So when scanning with, with X-ray, we don't get absolute numbers for density. So we can compare it, we see differences. Um, but we cannot see small deviations in the density of one material. So we can tell if there is a more heavy metal or less heavy, less dense metal, but we cannot see if there's slight variations inside one material. This is not possible. Okay, and is it possible to measure the thickness of electrode coating? That's another question. Um, here it also depends on the thickness we're talking about. Um, and if we use the X-ray microscope, then again, we can measure everything that's starting with maybe one micron. So then it's possible, yes. But for smaller coatings, it isn't. Okay. We have a lot of questions coming in on the uh, Q&A box. Uh, there is one question from Mr. Paul and it asks, what are the tasks times for cell XCT for cylindrical cells. I'm not sure whether it's uh, uh, who I should direct it to and whether it's a very uh, a very very uh, specific so, question. Yeah, so, so I think it's about, if I get it right, it's about uh, the typical scanning times or cycle times for using X-ray CT for the cylindrical cells. And if I get it right, then again, it depends on what you want to see inside your cell. If you just want to find defects, if you want to find bigger particles, or if they're really interested in very small particles. But we can tell, as rule of thumb, um, really, in general, you can scan a cylindrical battery cell on a metal 1500, for example, within two or three minutes. If you just want a really rough impression, first impression. But typical times maybe is uh, 10 or 20 minutes. And if you really go down also with the, what is also possible with the Metatome 1500, to maybe three or four migrants, then you need several hours. So it's really strict, strongly depends on if it's more for the research optimization or really to check your um, samples at line to the production. Okay. Mr. Sahil is asking, is there any impact on the stability of chemicals 
in the battery due to use of this technology? So if you talk about typical scanning times, then there's absolutely no impact. Um, oh, someone. Ah. Yeah. So um, the, the cell is not affected by the X-ray. Understood. And Mr. Sarvanan is asking, is this similar system available for hairpin weld monitoring? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we cannot use our CTs, the volumarks or midtomes, not only for the batteries and modules, but you can also scan the stator, for example, and check the welding at the top and bottom, if necessary, um, to find defects or to optimize the welding process, right? Okay, understood. I think there are some questions coming in the chat box as well. And uh, let me just quickly go to- I've answered it, I've answered it. Okay, ma'am. The chat box I've answered, yeah. All right. Uh, in that case, I think we have uh, covered most of the questions that had come. Uh, if there is any other questions, uh, what are going to come out? Uh, okay, so uh, there are a couple of uh, people asking about sharing the PPT. Uh, I don't think that will be possible, but you can sort of go through it again. We will put the recording on our YouTube channel in a couple of days. So if there, there's any part of this presentation you want to revisit, we will be sharing the links with all the participants. Okay. Um, I would also request the panel to just go through the Q&A box. And if they think that there is some other inputs they want to add, uh, I've tried to uh, address all the questions. There is a little bit of uh, duplicacy in a couple of questions that I've not taken up. But if you would like to address a particular question, please feel free. And one last information to all the participants is in case of any measurement services required for uh, battery or uh, motors, anything related to EV, uh, they can get in touch with us. We have, we are providing this uh, mail ID of Mr. Renil, uh, who is our marketing head. So you can get in touch with us through him and we'll be able to do uh, the services, whatever is required for you. Sure, yeah. noted. So Mr. Renil's uh, contact details are on the screen. He's available at renil at mamba at zeiss.com. Uh, there is one more question before we close this, uh, Mr. From, from Mr. Sri, Sri Ram Kumar. How do X-ray CT solutions complement visual methods of inspection? Complement. So I'm not sure what is exactly meant here, but of course, uh, for some kind of evaluation, you still need the 2D evaluation. For example, using scanning electron microscopy, if you really go down to the low nanometer um, region. But of course, you have the possibility to scan a sample using an X-ray microscope, then give you exactly the X, Y, Z position of a defect or of some detail you want to inspect with higher magnification. And then using the size SEM, you can then go to exactly to prepare the sample exactly to find exactly the same place, the sample, and then you get a lot of more information. But of course, then you'll have to destroy and polish and so on your sample. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's one question from Mr. Kalpesh on what are the important standards for ensuring quality of lithium ion batteries? Is there any commonly accepted certification method? So uh, Kalpesh, for this uh, ARAI, uh, AIS, there are AIS standards that the lithium ion batteries have to follow. There is, uh, if you want particular standard names, you can just uh, give me a minute and I will type those in the chat. So these are the standards, battery safety standards in India that have been mandated by ARAI. I think we'll take one more question from Mr. Amol. I think that's the last question. Is there any impact on the crystalline or amorphous material used cells? Manoj, you so want to this... yeah. Sorry? Sorry, I thought Manoj was answering this. Please go ahead to Ah, oh. oh, Okay, this, uh, so I thought it's going to the same direction as before and- um, Right. We don't change the, the structure of material using Correct. our X-ray, so yeah. no. Uh, no, Mr. Amol, there is, uh, I mean, we have not seen any impact. So you can uh, scan your cells and you don't see any impact on your cells. Uh, please, please, for everybody, the X-ray measurements are non-destructive. 
so they don't create any impact on your working or used cells you see them as it is as they are uh, when it comes to checking the sci layer and finding out higher resolution uh, elements or coatings then you need to do a destructive uh, measurement using our scanning electron microscopes uh, the best the best part for all of you on this call is that all the technologies are available in india at bangalore and some available in pune and we are we are in soon we will be releasing a battery catalog especially uh, for for gentlemen who are working on setting up lithium battery plants uh, for making modules we will give you a complete catalog you can take all these services from us as uh, mentioned by hemant so it is available in india that's a message what we want to give you you don't have to go anywhere and we are there to support you and and manoj these services they are available on pay per use basis Yes, exactly. Uh, Priyakshi, paper use basis. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I think uh, a very useful and insightful event. I would like to thank all the panelists and the audience members for uh, bringing in their perspectives, offering insights, and asking good questions to uh, make this session overall very productive and very helpful, everyone. So thank you so much. Have a lovely evening, and uh, you can all reach out to Renil at Renil dot Mamba at Zais dot com. for any further questions and inquiries thank you so much thanks thanks priyakshi and dv reporter team for for organizing this and to connect with all the uh, battery manufacturers thank you so much thank you thank you very much thanks bye thank you priyakshi thank you hemant thank you dr tobias thank you thank you manoj yeah